So now when we talk about mirror symmetry, symmetrical circuit, how do we solve? So I have taken an example of a Wheatstone bridge. So as you can see that this by this is equal to this by this, right? Correct? 4 by 2R, 4R by 2R is equal to 4R by 2R, which means this is a balanced Wheatstone bridge. So if this is a balanced Wheatstone bridge, obviously this resistance will have nothing to do, right? So you have got 4R and 4R, which are in series, 2R and 2R, which are in series, and then together they are in parallel, correct? Okay. We know this by Wheatstone bridge. Now we are going to solve the same thing by using mirror symmetry or perpendicular axis of symmetry or line symmetry. Now for this, you need to be very careful. You need to note down everything that I'm going to tell you, how you're going to find out. So you have got two points, point A and point B. Okay. Now, first thing is that you just imagine that you have connected it across a battery, imaginary battery like this or a cell. No problem. Okay. okay. Later on, we'll just skip that part because now after a after couple of problems, we'll get so used to it that we'll understand that, okay, it is connected across a battery. Now, we'll imagine that let us say I amount of current is flowing through this. Okay. Fine. Now, you see, when you look at this circuit, you need to find the net equivalent resistance across A and B, fine. What is the first thing that you do? First is that understand that we'll be joining A and B like this. This is called as the axis, axis or you can call as the, the parallel line or the line along A, B, whatever you call it, no problem. Perpendicular to this line will be our perpendicular axis. This will be perpendicular to the line. And in such a way that you have a exact symmetry on either side of the circuit. What do I mean by symmetry? It means that if I consider this to be a mirror, you can see exact image on left hand side of the circuit is equal to right hand side of the circuit. So if I call this as LHS, this should be equal to exact RHS, exact replica. No problem. Okay. So once you have divided it like this, and you have seen that, okay, this is the line of symmetry or this is the perpendicular axis of symmetry. Next, what? We will say that, okay, I current comes over here and gets divided into I1 and I2. This is the incoming current into the circuit, right? So I1, I is coming over here. And then from this junction, you can see I1 is going like this and I2 is going like this. Now, in the mirror image, the same amount of current is going to flow. Remember that. In the mirror image, the same amount of current is going to flow. So if I1 is flowing through this 4R, I2 will flow out like this, like this. So I1 in this circuit, then I1 will go out from here. I2 is coming through this 2R, so I2 will be going out like this. That's the symmetry. This is what you need to learn, okay? So if I1 is coming in through this, then I1 will flow out through this. I2 is coming in through this, then I2 will go out through this. No problem. Okay. And then finally, they will meet at this junction and then final the amount of current that you are going to get is equal. Now, now when we realize this, we see that I1 is coming like this and I1 flows like this. No problem. I2 is coming like this and I1, uh, sorry, I2 flows like this. Perfect. Which means that through this resistance, through this resistance, through this resistance, no current is flowing, isn't it? There is no current through this resistance. Correct? So this is just redundant. We can just remove that. No problem. So if you just remove that, then you have the same condition. 4R and 4R in series combination and 2R and 2R in series combination and together they are in parallel. So you can directly draw the equivalent circuit like A. You'll have 8R and you will have 4R connected in parallel across A and B. Now, not to mention the formula of parallel R equivalent in case of parallel, you know, is going to be equal to R1, R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Very simple, just find that out, okay? So this is how you are going to solve this. So now what you need to remember is that first of all, we'll divide the circuit in such a way. We'll draw a line which is joining A and B and then draw a perpendicular line. We'll divide the circuit in such a way, such that, such that 
it is symmetric right and then if you are saying i1 and i2 is coming like this then i1 and i2 should be going also like this right in the mirror image i'll again show you again again see again watch it closely see see what is happening we draw this line and then we discuss about the current the same amount of current will be flowing through these resistances which are symmetric and thus once you solve this you are going to get a very simple very simple circuit and of course you can solve it then and get the final value as 8 by 3r no problem that's one way to do it another way was to figure out that this is a balanced wheatstone bridge this is a balanced wheatstone bridge and the moment you have figured out that this is a balanced wheatstone bridge then obviously the, anything between these two points is redundant it's not necessary because no current will be flowing through it under balanced condition so you can directly remove it now obviously in this case it was quite obvious because just by looking at the circuit we were able to justify or we were able to figure out that yes it's a uh, it's a it's a it's a circuit which is obviously a balanced wheatstone bridge so we were able to do it like that but not in every case you will be able to do and also not in every case you will be able to use the symmetry okay only in certain cases you will be able to do and that identification you will come to know only when you practice more and more questions based on these okay so this is about the perpendicular line symmetry 